Okay. Yeah, my name's James Darby and I'm a political conservative and I've made it sort of my life work to understand the nature of campaigning. So I'm giving this presentation today so that freedom lovers can combat the most excellent and efficient, brilliant campaigning people in Australia, and that is the Labor Party. The Labor Party is genius at campaigning because the Labor Party is good at nothing else. The only thing they're good at is campaigning. So all their energy and all their effort, all their motivation and their skill and their manipulation and their mon the capacity to raise money is based upon the capacity to win the numbers. And the numbers means you've got to get a majority in the Houses of Parliament to be, get a man into Parliament and you've got to have a majority of politicians in Parliament to be able to bring in laws or disband laws. One of the things that has always hampered the Conservative parties is their desire, their inbuilt incredible desire to maintain control of the party and be in control of a party and not be concerned that that party enter parliament as a government unless they're in control of it. So the conservative parties have no real interest in going into government with their party unless the controllers and manipulators of that party who choose those who are involved in the pre-selection process, unless the party is under their control, they don't want government. And that's why they don't have a campaign structure to win government because a campaign structure involves the involvement of thousands of people. Thousands of people who are motivated to become politically active eventually want to join the party to make a further contribution in policy or in, uh, in uh, campaigning techniques. The people who are involved in these political activities are what I call process people. They're involved in the process and they build themselves around the process, not the solution. Often when the solution arrives, the process is decimated, decimated, the process is over, and so they're out of a position. And that's been reflected in Australian politics for a very long time. So the Liberal Party, instead of forming a street rep system with an individual in each street who represents the people in that street for communication with the politicians so that the policy can come through, so that the understanding of the undecided and how to influence those undecided to vote for freedom and the preservation of small business employers uh, has never ever taken place because the Liberal Party is so fearful that a, a large numbers of people joining the party will influence the way that they control the pre-selection process and therefore the way they control the future of Australia. So to win a campaign in a state seat it only requires about 800 people. To win a, I'm talking about for freedom parties, and I'm going to be explaining what motivates a freedom person. To win a, fed, a, sta, a, a federal seat takes between 1,500 and 2,200 people. They're people that I term political advocates. Now, what creates a political advocate is a person who's asked or presented themselves to a campaign on the expectation that a task will be given them. When a person who's offered to help a politician or a pretend politician or a possible politician or a, a nominated politician, when a person who's offered to help or goes to a peace rally and their offer to help is denied them, they feel negated they feel irrelevant, they feel belittled, they feel insignificant, and they feel wounded. And that's because the people who are running those places 
are working on a process situation instead of on a solution situation. The solution in politics is to win the seat. To win the seat requires 2,200 people, say, for a federal seat. Let's call it 2,000. can be done with 2,000. That's about 1,500 street reps. 1,500 street reps cover about 30 houses each or 30 apartments each. A street rep is recruited initially by me on the phone, but there's lots of other ways to recruit them and I want to go next, I want to discuss the recruitment of street reps for the freedom movement as the most important aspect. And I used to recruit street reps by phone, out of the phone book before computers, and I could recruit one person in five to help the then Liberal Party uh, as a street rep. What I discovered when I recruited a street rep was that suddenly they wanted to be my friend as well. Suddenly, 60% of them asked to do more. They all communicated with me about how neighbourly they'd become and how they were walking their dog with an extra poo bag how they were mowing their neighbours' front verges, how they were bringing their neighbours' garbage bins in, how they were talking over the fence, how they actually had nice neighbours they didn't know they had. Because at the moment they made their first delivery to the letterbox, they felt an essence of gratitude in their very soul, gratitude to themselves that they were making a difference and a contribution. That feeling, that sort of, that feeling of warmth and self-gratitude that they felt motivated them to ask to do more. And the more, when, as soon as they asked to do more, I had another task for them, uh, register for a, for a core flute. I only like core flutes scattered randomly over in an electorate. I only like them on private property. I don't like them on any public polls. And I like seven days before the election for a forest to come out throughout the whole electorate, four or five or six in each street so that suddenly they make an impact. The longer they are there on public places, the more pollution they create for the minds of people and the more they become ignored. When they come out as a forest in the last seven days of the election, the people who see them suddenly, oh, my neighbour's voting for them, my neighbour's voting for them. A lot of the time when the street wreck's been functioning over a period of time, they know what their neighbour's voting anyway because their neighbour's told them. And the whole street knows. I just want to bring in here the street rep's job, part of the job of the street rep, and I've written a big page about it, what, how the street rep should conduct himself. When the street rep discovers a rusted on socialist, the street rep's advised you mark them off and you never visit them again. The rusted on people we leave to rust away. What we seek as street reps is the undecided the nonchalant, the unconcerned, the dissident, but the rusted on heavy socialist we leave alone. We, know, we don't want to motivate them. So over time, as the street rep gets to know his neighbours and before long they're asking me, can I door knock? And that's why I prepare a petition over, I usually prepare a petition for the street rep to use as an excuse to door knock. The petition is a particular style the petition is a, has a tear-off section, bearing in mind the rule that all campaign material is for the purpose of recruitment. This petition is a recruitment petition which enables the legal part, the signature, the name and surname and the address and postcode, but it adds in the email and the phone number, which is taken off before the petition is handed in. So that petition on a clipboard is a perfect petition for the, door, for the street rep to door knock his neighbours and to determine quietly and calmly without any aggression as to how they intend to vote. And if they're firm in their vote and if they're undecided about how to vote and what's influencing them in their voting procedure. And that petition, of course, being a recruitment tool, uh, gives the street rep the opportunity of recruiting because as is the basis of all sales organisations, the essence of the first lesson is trained to train. So the street rep is trained to train other people to recruit other people on the basis of the compounding 
in, in the compounding result of recruiting one street rep should technically result in 50 more type street rep people, given enough time, given 10 weeks. So the street rep gets the door knock, the petition, the street rep gets to determine in the street who's infirm and can't make it to the polling booth properly and organises the postal vote. The street rep organises the people who are on side to be a core flute display. Me, to, what's a core flute display? A core flute is the big sign that is stationed at the polling booths with the head of the candidate. Thank you. Okay. And uh, it's a... There's two size core flutes that we make. We make the small core flute, the A, which goes into shop windows, and the large size, which goes onto front yards and walls of units. Um, so the street rep develops an enormous amount of tasks, which I won't continue with now, other than the street rep is trained to train. And Ideally, and it's only happened on a few occasions, the street rep will get a little brass plaque which says street rep for the candidate, which goes on his front gate. He will get a name tag which says his name and street and the name of his street, street rep for the candidate on a name tag is an ideal situation. What he's encouraged to do, and I, I will come back a bit and say this, in political campaigns, around about five to seven, five to nine percent of people read campaign material that ends in the leather box. Very few read it. The beautiful thing about the street rep, he always reads it, or she always reads it. They read the material. No one wants to deliver something they haven't read. And so the preparation of the campaign material that's given to the street rep has to be absolutely concise. It has to be short sentences. It has to be impactful. It has to be motivational. It has to be rememberable and it has to be able to be passed on at will and ease with a pride. And so it's very, very important that uh, rubbish and motherhood type statements and, and um, cliche type statements don't form part of political material. Sure, they, they produce their big brochures sometimes and those things sometimes can be delivered, but sometimes I've chosen not to deliver them at all, and I deliver my own material when I want to win, which is what I always want to win. <laughs> so the street rep now is a political advocate. What they do next is they ask what polling booth they can be on. And whilst it's good to appoint polling booth captains early, Sometimes it's best to delay the appointment in case more skilled polling, in case more sk skilled <coughs> captains come forward. Uh, it's very important to man the polling booths, and it's very, very important to train the polling booth workers. I hold a view that a good polling booth worker can be worth up to seven percent of the vote, and the polling booth workers must be trained for the polling booth. Clive Palmer, in particular is a phenomenal trainer of polling booth workers. Uh, whether he uses someone to do it or whether he's got a book that shows people how to do it. Uh, he also, uh, he trains them very well. And I've encountered some phenomenal booth workers that have been volunteers for Clive Palmer. Uh, the polling booth worker who can win 7%. And it's a very, very important point I'll bring up here now that the, one of the very finest places to recruit future election wins is at the polling booth as people exit. The people that say, well done, I hope you win, they're the people you never let go. They're the people who you get to fill the job applicant, they help, offer to help form. They're the people that must never ever be escaped from the polling booth because they're the people who are going to be a strong backbone to maintain the win if you've won it, and in particular to win it next time if you haven't. So uh, the, that, this particular form I've called the offer to help form, it's the 110 form, and it's a form that 
I'm now going to go to the peace rallies, the peace rallies, the freedom rallies for peace against totalitarianism. The peace rally has an amazing capacity for people. We, under pure duress, developed the freedom rally as some sort of retort to what used to happen 20 and 30 years ago. And our rallies are so much better than their rallies ever were. The, peace, the freedom rallies that are taking place on the Gold Coast, the freedom rallies that are taking place on the Gold Coast are some of the best rallies that I've seen. I've seen the people there motivated and cheer and clap and stand and holler. And then I've watched them sag chest and feel belated because no one's ever said anything to them of what they can do. So what I'm recommending now is that a, an immediate movement be made with the, all the leaders of the peace rallies, the, uh, beg your pardon, the, all the leaders of, you'll have to edit me out, Peter. The, all the leaders of the uh, freedom movements gather together so I can explain the plan to them that I'm going to explain now. And that is, a clipboard is a remarkable political tool. A clipboard that is attached with a pen to a form is handed to the person next to you at the, at the Freedom Rally. This is an offer to help form for the small and emerging parties, for a force for the small and emerging parties and the independents to restore our freedom. The proviso with it is that the candidate that we're going to support must have the view the Greens go last, Labor second last, the Liberals and Nationals third last or fourth last. When you've got this form filled out, take it off the clipboard and give it to me and pass the clipboard on. The second way is an app that we've presented to our friend and that app is a telephone app called the Majority App. And what it is, it's an app that's transferred from mobile to mobile. And what it does is it gives the person who's received it on their mobile phone the opportunity to declare, I'm happy to accept the appointment for a street rep to deliver, to deliver material to my neighbours. It's okay to email a page to me if I can print on my own printer and deliver. I understand the importance of willing votes at pre-poll and I'll be able to help at least one morning or afternoon session at a pre-poll voting centre. On polling day, I'll help for a couple of hours before I vote. My usual booth is, my occupation skills and special knowledge are, plus a whole raft of other things, such as uh, I am available to help uh, construct core flute signs. I'm available as a scrutineer. I'm available as a chauffeur for the candidate. I'm available to help old people to the polling booth, and so on and so forth. There's a complete spectrum of every imaginable campaign activity is on this app, including all the pre-poll names and addresses and the number of persons that voted at them. There was 34,000 people who voted pre-poll in this particular lecture that I'm in at the moment, over 102,000 people have voted. So up to 35% of people are voting pre-poll. So it's vital to man the polling booths. When the person receives this app and they fill it out, they then receive an email confirming what they've agreed to do. The campaign manager of the particular area that they're in receives an email with their details as well. So they get a copy, 
the campaign manager of the particular area that they're in, according to where they're on the roll, gets a copy of their commitment to help in that street. They'll then get an email with directions on how to be a street rep. They'll get an email on methods of collecting, methods of collecting petitions. They'll get an email on training to train. They'll get an email on the poignant different aspects of what motivates people to campaign for freedom. And the very essence in my mind and what's motivated me is the desire to protect the C person, the self-employed employer. Self-employed employer, which includes the individual self-employed person who doesn't employ anyone, except his wife maybe. The self-employed employer is the very backbone and the very essence of our freedoms. Because it's a self-employed employer who takes an apprentice and teaches that apprentice how to become self-employed. Every employee of a self-employed person who employs is an apprentice employer. And one of the huge attacks on self on C people by government is to make the employees of self-employed employers wary of becoming self-employed, to dampen their soul and their spirit with the use of the GST, with the use of compulsory super, with the use of uh, unfair dismissal laws, and a whole raft of measures that make the self-employed employer's employee fearful of becoming self-employed and that has to change at one time australia had 70 percent of its employees actual employers the balance and that's employers actual employees of self-employed employers I've got to define what a self-employed employer is. A self-employed employer is a person who bears the ethical and moral responsibility for the conduct of the business in their own identifiable name. They wear the bunny. They carry the belt. They are not disguised by corporate madness. They are refreshed with a conscience and a morality and a code of ethics, which is sadly lost in Bunnings and Coles and Woolworths. And it's up to now Australia to start to turn the page. And it's up to now for Australian small business to take control of councils and to make sure that, this, that small business people are protected against the impost of big business and big government. Because big business and big government have one desire only and that is to rub out small business. They want to rub out small business because small business employees don't join a union and big business employees do and unions fund the Socialist Labor Party. So if an organisation can be made, and I'm suggesting that we invite all the small business, all the small, all the, um, the small business organised, not the small business woman, and all the freedom parties, freedom rally people, to a meeting where I can explain to them that these thousands of people that they're gathering to the rally can be gathered in a harvest of power and force, that they divorce themselves from this idiot uh, Ricardo Bossi and stop trying to talk revolution. Our revolution has to be with a ballot box and the ballot paper. We have to win the parliaments, the councils. We have to win the state parliament. We have to win the federal parliament. We have to win the councils. And we have to preserve our way of life as Australians, as small business people. We are the majority and our employees, so many of them are still there because the employer won't go out of business because they doesn't want to disadvantage their, disadvantage their employee. We can do it and it can be done and it has to be done quickly now.